。在我们现今所处的社会，常常会因为彼此的不同而产生纷争，不论是宗教的不同、人种的不同，或是说性取向的不同。这些纷争甚至会引发不可收拾的结果。不过，我们今天要介绍的这个国家，却对彼此的不同有完全不一样的看法。Good morning, Malaysia. Uh, ever since we arrived, we are really shocked how culturally diverse this place is. And just to give you a brief understanding of what's happening, so we are in Indian area. Just over there, there's a fruit shop owned by Hongkonese lady, and she sells the best juice ever in the town. How do you shop in the morning? Ta-da! One cup is five thousand ringgit. Thirty? Eh, thirty-five. Thirty-five ringgit Thai baht. It's so cheap. And guys, I have to say, like, we're trying to talk to the lover, but he's always so busy because this shop is so crazy popular. He's so cool. Both him and Lao Bayan, they can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, English, Malay. He was like looking at Lena, speaking English to her. Looking at me, he starts speaking Mandarin, and looking at like Malay or like India, he starts speaking Malay to them. I was like, wow, how fast he can switch a language like that. 我相信大家对马来西亚绝对不陌生。这里是个多元民族的大熔炉，最主要的族群为马来人、华人及印度人。来到这里。会让你有种一次走访三个国家的错觉。不过这就让我们好奇，文化背景和宗教信仰如此不同的三个族群，真的能互相包容吗？ Yeah. So、I was like, who to find? Oh, you guys are the perfect candidate, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, how is it possible that so many different ethnic groups get along so well? And we work together. We work together. Yeah, we work together. We were born in this country. Yeah, born yeah. in this environment, yeah, go we to the same school. Yeah. Yeah. We went to mixed schools, right? right. right. Oh, mixed, mixed schools. schools. Yeah. So mixed there is like a school for mixed, there is also a school for like... Vernicular schools. Particular yes. school. Oh, yeah. so what's the difference? Um, the medium of instruction is different. For vernacular school, they might use Tamil or Chinese. For mixed school, they use the national language, English. Malay. Normally, you guys speak English to each other or like Malay? English. English. Call it Manglish maybe. Manglish. Bit of English and then you put a lot of Malay words Malay in Malay it. Words, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like it's Singlish, Manglish. but there's correct, no correct. Malay. Yeah, yeah. But all of you still can speak your own languages, right? Yes. So you can yes. speak yeah. Tamil, Chinese. Yeah. But yes. probably you won't understand each other. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> not. Did you see just that a lady was riding a suitcase? No, I was like, why is she sitting on a suitcase? It turns out it's like a scooter. Scooter. <laughs> yeah. This is so cool. It's gonna be like a reporter with a microphone. In case if you guys didn't know, Malaysia is the home to the second tallest building in the world. Just behind me. It's called Merideka 118. It has 118 floors and it's 679 meters tall. Look how tall it is. It's so hard to fit in the camera. I literally have to crouch down yeah. like this. So I can fit Lena inside. <laughs> and actually not many people know about it because it's still under the construction. Later probably you will see it in the news. Wow, look what we got. The curry soup dumpling? It's called Momo. Momo. Ah, Momo. Mmm. Oh. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's 印度料理里面那种清香料的辣味。哦。各位，我不知道最近不知道发生什么事，但是 Lena 超级爱吃印度啊、尼泊尔这种比较算是南亚料理，我一直都很爱。你一直都很爱。对。所以来到马来西亚等于是圆梦，因为你每天都可以吃。因为在台湾吃印度料理好贵呢。哎，对，真的，其实马来西亚的印度料理啊，其实很便宜。其实连这个我都觉得算便宜，这时候啊，十五块。十二块。十二块吗？对，不到一百块台币，然后你看，这么大一份。拜拜。Bye bye。Remember to subscribe。哈哈哈。我觉得蛮特别的，因为我刚刚跟他们说，啊，你们有这个吗？他们说 ，Yes。<laughs> I think the the main part that brings us together is the food. Yeah, we all share the same passion called food. <laughs> yes, yeah. we eat all Malay, Chinese, and Indian food together. Every Malaysian, whoever, wherever they are, everybody will look forward to coming home to the food. I think I have 
three favorites in each. If it's Indian, it should be banana leaf. If it's Malay, it's nasi lemak. Oh. Can you guys speak Malay? Yes. Kami boleh bercakap dalam bahasa Melayu. I don't know say what you're saying, but that sounds very fluent. I'm just saying that uh, I can speak. Uh, yes. Oh, right. Because we Malaysia. born, we were born and grew up in Malaysia. We we basically know our mother language. For me, it's Tamil, and then English and Malay. I want to show you guys like a pretty interesting dining culture. So this place is called like Mamak. So basically, it's like the India Islamic restaurant. Where it's sort of something similar to Taiwan de Xiao Chi. 对，然后我们有问这边在地的马来人，他说就是在马来西亚，如果你要吃比较便宜又好吃的早餐，可以来这里。像我们刚刚点的 juice 多少钱？大概三十块。三十块。然后我刚刚点了一杯 tea tarik。也差不多，好像也是四块吧，应该差不多。And how crazy is that? That most of these places are open 24/7. So whenever you're hungry, you don't know where to go, people just come here. They have literally everything from tom yum to Indian food to Malay food, probably some Chinese food too. Is there such a thing that say different ethnic they work in different industry? There is. It's still quite prevalent nowadays. I think Chinese majority owns the economy or business sector. Yes. And then Malays will work for the government mostly. And then Indians got sidelined with rubber industry. Uh, yeah, rubber industry. Like rubber industry. Transportation. Transportation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why is that? Is that because the company like to hire? Ah, uh, it's a British legacy it's, thing. Yeah. 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 It's not back then. It's, it's, it's still going on for centuries. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> So yeah, the British brought the Chinese into for mining and yeah. all the business sector, and then the Chinese got got a first start on it, and then the British brought in the Indians for rubber, rubber sector, transportation, pave, transportation, security. yeah, pave, paving the roads. Yeah. Yeah. Most of our roads in Malaysia were actually made by Indians, oh, and wow. therefore they were more involved in the transport transportation sector. Oh, look at you! Look at your clothes. <laughs> 我只要到一个国家，我都会试把让自己 blend in。Like when we went to Indonesia, I'm trying to wear this kind of more tropical vibe shirt, and now in Malaysia, I'm wearing the Malay shirt. <笑>这是我前几天在这个马来西亚夜市里面买，他跟我说这是他们的传统服饰，而且通常他们说啊，只会在特别节日啊，或者一些重要场合才会穿。Yesterday it was so funny. Once we checked in our hotel, the lady at the counter was like looking at Patrick and asking, "Wait, you're from Taiwan? How come you're so tan?" And then the second question she asked, "How come you guys always ask for the hair dryer? Like, why do you need to dry your hair all the time?" <laughs> and she was like, "I don't understand. You can wash your hair and let it dry naturally." I tried it, but it was really bad. <laughs> you tried it was really bad. Where? I tried it in Indonesia, and I think maybe it was too ripe or something. But it was so so bad. I bought the whole one and brought it to the hostel. And once I opened it, everyone was like, "What is that?" <laughs> and then I was trying to give it to other people to try, and then I was so scared. And I just ate a little bit, and then I really couldn't finish. It was just too smelly, too stinky. Mmm. Hey, this is a good one. It tastes so creamy. It tastes so much better than the one I tried. It's like kind of like butter. It's a durian taste. Here you can see such a mixture of cultures because just now we exited Chinatown, and you can already see a Hindu temple. This all happened so quickly. Just like we passed through the Hindu temple. Like this is the Mandala festival. Everyone wears so traditional here. I do feel like we're in India. No joke. Malaysia people are very welcoming to all kinds of different cultures and religions. It looks like a perfect multiracial society, but there are still many differences in the Malaysian society. Do you have like discrimination against different races? Definitely there this is. Happens. When I used to work with a Chinese company owned by a Chinese, uh, they might have preference just to employ Chinese only. 
same goes for uh, Malay majority companies. Right. They might they have they, the they, inclination to just employ Malay. They'll hide it a bit by saying a oh, um, Chinese speaker only. Oh, so it's not illegal to say that. No, it's not illegal. Yeah. It's not. But we know it's a uh, raci racism in, in in hiding. Oh. This is just working, but when you want to acquire accommodation. There are times where uh, property owners would say certain race, certain race only. 马来西亚政府在一九七零年代提出了新经济政策，将国民分成不民不特拉以及 non 不民不特拉。原先目标是希望能消除种族间的经济差异，但。却造成了马来人至上的差别待遇。昨天晚上我没有跟我们住的饭店的 front desk 聊天，他本身是马来人，那他说马来人事实上是有一些好处，比如说买房子有特别的价钱，然后每个月政府会给他三百块 ringgit， 就是当做一个补助。他也有说到说，他们不同族群之间最大的特点就是马来人呢有点像是台湾原住民，就是比较乐天。喜欢享受生活，那华人嘛，就是喜欢工作，工作赚很多钱呐、啊，做不同的生意，赚越多钱越好。旅行最有意义的地方就是，当你实际走访了那里，与当地的人聊天，你会发现国家政府不能代表那里的国民。It's also quite interesting, though there are some policies that are supposed to separate different ethnic groups, but in reality, people just get along so well. You go to Indian restaurant, you see some Chinese or Malay eating there. You go to Chinese restaurant, you see Malay eating with the chopsticks or Indian with eating with the chopsticks. Even though they look very different, they have very different cultures, but they still live together in peace. I find it so amazing. Government likes to separate people, but when it comes to normal, Citizens, they just try to bring themselves together. They have been brought up to accept different cultures, which makes them more respectful of each other. Learning about different cultures has developed a unique culture in Malaysia. Is there happen to be a lot of mixed family? It's becoming more common nowadays. We have new races coming out called Chinese, Chinese Indian, which look like Malay. Which look like Malay? Oh, really? Back in history, we have Baba and Nyonya, which is Chinese and Malay. It's ongoing all the time. Yes. Everyone lives together. Everyone lives together. We're all friendly, honestly. So you don't actually look at people with different races, like we're all Malaysian. Not really. We're all together. Radio 讲一句马来西亚的 slogan， 我觉得很棒。他说 ，Our differences make us unique, and our similarity brings us together. 如果说来到马来西亚，让我们印象最深刻的是什么？那就是不同族群的特殊传统文化所编织出来的多元社会。I feel like there is no better place to make an ending than here. Yeah, in the cave, because first it's really beautiful, secondly it's quite cool in here. It feels really nice. Yeah, I think by far it's one of the most unique temples I've ever seen. Actually, the first time I see a temple built inside a natural cave. So it was very magnificent. Yeah, plus there's so many animals. It's kind of really unbelievable place. Now I'm almost done with this video. Thank you for watching. And if you want to continue to support us on our trip, 也可以加入我们的会员。Alright, see ya somewhere in the world. Bye bye.